Check out Deuteronomy 2016. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Whew, that's a heavy scripture. And you know, this passage and the other passages in the Old Testament that refer to the same command from God, that's a troubling, troubling passage for most Christians. And it should be. It should strike you right at the moral center of your soul. You know, we have here an apparent contradiction in the character of God. On one hand, we know that God is loving and full of mercy and grace, and God so loved the entire world, not just one family, but the entire world, that he gave his son for us. And on the other hand, we have God ordering the utter destruction of every man, woman, and child of this certain geographical area that the children of Israel were moving into. You know, and I'm sure you've heard it explained, on one level, these people had fallen into such deep, dark religious practices that they were even sacrificing their own children. On one hand, yes, but it goes even deeper than that. It wasn't just a religious problem, but it was a genetic problem as well. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The sons of God. You know, this term, don't let somebody tell you that this term is re re referring to, you know, a certain branch of Adamites or the Sethites or something like that. This term is used over and over again in the Old Testament. Look in the book of Job, for example, to refer to angels. These are fallen angels also referenced in Jude and 1 Peter. The fallen angels that left their place of habitation, left heaven, and were intermarrying with human women. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be hundred, uh, be a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. These giants, the Hebrew word Nephilim, coming from the root Napha to fall, linking them with the fallen angels, of course. You know, this concept shouldn't be completely foreign to you. You know, we know that almost every ancient religion on the planet has stories of the gods coming down, intermarrying with women, and giving birth to some sort of a union between half-god, half-mortal type creatures. Lucky for us, we have the Bible, which tells the true perspective. These were not gods, these were fallen angels coming and intermarrying an unholy union between human women and angels. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will utterly destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The earth had fallen into such, uh, such immorality because of this demonic infestation. Verse 8, pay attention. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Again, on the surface, we have an, a contradiction. In verse 8, we see that Noah uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And in verse 9, we're told Noah was perfect in his generations. So which was it? We know that perfect people don't need grace. So it's one or the other. But we know in, in the Hebrew, in verse 9, perfect in his generations. What this is referring to is his bloodline. His family hadn't intermixed with the bloodlines of the fallen angels. So his pedigree was perfect. His bloodline was perfect. That's why he was saved and used to repopulate after the flood. So in the first event we see that God dealt with this demonic infestation using the flood. And we know that there must have been a second infestation in verse 4, and also after that, there was another infestation of fallen angels. You remember that land, this land in Israel, was promised to Abraham's children in Genesis chapter 12. And then Abraham's children, Israel, went into captivity in Egypt for 400 years. That gave Satan 400 years to lay down a minefield 
This land was infested with the Raphaim and the Anakim, families of the Nephilim. And we read in Numbers 13, there were giants in that land. You know, I'm sure the most famous one you're familiar with, Goliath and his family. So in the second round, God chose to deal with this using Israel's sword. So yes, God is a loving God and he saved mankind, the human race, from a demonic DNA invasion and saved that bloodline which our Savior, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come through.